Welcome to a front row seat to Britain's finest, the SAS. If James Bond and Bear Grylls had a baby, they'd be it. Hang on tight and find out if you can handle this. Let's wind the clock back to World War II, a time the only tweets were from the birds. It's here amidst the chaos that a young Scottish officer named David Sterling decided to form an elite commando unit, the Special Air Service, or SAS. Sterling himself was a cross between a military genius and a mischievous schoolboy, a perfect combination if you're planning on wreaking havoc behind enemy lines. And wreak havoc they did, with early operations focusing on disrupting Axis communications and supply routes in the deserts of North Africa. The SAS's approach to warfare was like bringing a jackhammer to a game of chess. They were unconventional, audacious, and incredibly effective. In one mission alone, they reportedly destroyed over 60 enemy aircraft on the ground. The Germans were flabbergasted, probably muttered some angry German words, and tried to figure out how to stop these pesky Brits. Meanwhile, the SAS was already planning their next move, just like a cheeky group of schoolboys planning their next prank. But how do you become a SAS member nowadays? You see, the SAS isn't just looking for fit individuals. No, they want something akin to Superman, minus the cape and the kryptonite allergy. The selection process is less of a process and more of an ordeal. Candidates start with grueling physical tests. Imagine running with a backpack heavier than your last relationship's emotional baggage, and that's just the appetizer. Then comes survival training. They dump you in the harshest environments like the frigid Scottish Highlands and expect you to survive with limited resources. Next is the jungle phase. Think I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. Except there's no gourmet kangaroo surprise waiting. There's only leeches, humidity, and the creeping sense of dread. But wait, there's more. Should you survive the funhouse of nightmares, you are then whisked off to interrogation training. Yes, you heard me right. You're deprived of sleep, put through physical discomfort, and then kindly asked to spill your guts. And remember, no thank you, I'd rather not, is not an acceptable answer. But what are some of the greatest actions of those elite soldiers? The Iranian embassy siege in 1980 was like something out of a Hollywood movie, except it was broadcast live on BBC. Six armed men stormed the embassy and took 26 people hostage. Who got the call? You guessed it, the SAS. They stormed the building with the subtlety of a bulldozer rescuing all but one of the hostages. It was a grand entrance onto the world stage, and they didn't disappoint. But that was just the appetizer. Operation Barras in Sierra Leone saw the SAS in action, rescuing hostages from a dangerous rebel group. It was like that difficult second album for a rock band, but the SAS proved they were not a one-hit wonder. They crashed the party with guns blazing, took the rebels by surprise, and made sure the hostages were safely returned. In Iraq and Afghanistan, the SAS played vital roles in reconnaissance and direct action against enemy combatants. To top it off, they played a significant role in the Falklands War in 1982. In the freezing conditions and rough terrains, they conducted long-range reconnaissance and raiding missions, proving yet again that they could handle any kind of party. The world is changing, and so is the nature of conflict. Thankfully, our SAS chaps are rather good at keeping up with the times. It's not just about kicking doors down anymore, though we reckon they still do a fair bit of that. Today, the SAS is stepping up against threats that transcend borders and often lurk behind computer screens. Yes, we're talking cyber warfare. SAS operatives are trained to tackle these 21 saint century villains, which is not quite as cinematic as storming a building, but just as vital. But let's not forget their pivotal role in counterterrorism. Remember when you lost sleep over that scary headline? Well, these lads were probably out there in the thick of it, resolving the situation while we were busy hitting the snooze button. Hostage rescues, neutralizing terrorist cells, disrupting illicit activities. And then there's the covert surveillance and reconnaissance. You see, gathering intelligence is a lot like playing a high-stakes game of Cluedo, and the SAS are rather good at it. They could be watching for weeks, months even, all to get that vital bit of information. A smidge of patience, a dash of grit, and a whole lot of tea. But the SAS is an inspiration worldwide. Let's start with the fact that they've become a sort of a blueprint for elite forces worldwide. From the United States Delta Force to Australia's SASR, many special forces took a page or two from the SAS playbook. The legacy of the SAS doesn't stop at military tactics and training methods.